Hello and welcome to today's science lesson. So first of all guys, can we all turn to wave and say a big hello to our friends on camera? Hello. And we'll begin by doing our meditation sequence. So I will sit down, take two fingers, find our heart center, left hand on our laps and close our eyes. When you're ready guys, you can open your eyes and come back to the room. Next we'll do our stretch sequence. So let's stand up and push in our chairs. And we can begin by doing some rotations left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Excellent guys. Now we'll take our right hand and find our left foot. And then left hand, right foot. Right hand, left foot. Left hand, right foot. Right hand, left foot. Left hand, right foot. And one more time on each. Right hand, left foot. Left hand, right foot. Now let's shake it out. Arms and legs, let's have a nice shake out. And to finish, we will do five claps. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent guys, have a seat. So in today's science lesson, we have reached the end of the section that we have been studying recently. Now can anybody tell me what... Excellent, very well remembered, which is good because we're at the end of the material section now. So let's write that phrase on the board first. Materials, M, A, T, E, R, I, a L S and in today's lesson we're going to be having a review R E V I E W we're going to be reviewing all of the things that we've learned previously and then we'll have a couple of worksheet exercises for our students to demonstrate their knowledge of the things that they've learned so all together guys materials Review. Excellent. So the first thing we've got today is a PowerPoint presentation for our students to review and practice speaking of the different materials 
and the different things in connection with each material, such as properties, uses, and also the types of objects that we can find. So let's turn to look at the TV screen, guys. So let's take a look at our PowerPoint presentation, Materials Review. Yes, and on the opening slides, we have a picture and we can see some of the different types of materials. Metal, glass, plastic, fabric, concrete, wood, ceramic, and rubber. We use different materials to make items because they are used differently. And this picture is a good example because in this picture we have three different objects. We have a cup, a TV, and a lamp. The cup is made of clay or ceramic. That's one type of material. The TV screen is made of glass, which is another material. And the lamp is made of metal, which shows how different materials have different uses for different things. Clay is used to make objects that are used to hold things or pour liquids into. Examples of clay objects include cups, flower pots, and teapots. Like in this picture here, this is a teapot. Glass is used to make objects that are used for looking at things or seeing through. And like we already know, the main example of glass is the window. But there are other things too. Examples of glass objects include eyeglasses, TV screens, and windows. Yes, anything that needs looking, we would use glass. Metal is used to make objects that are used for transport and supplying things. Yes, metal is a material used very much in transport, especially the railway. When you see a train traveling, look at the track that the train is traveling on, and it's made of metal, the train tracks. Examples of metal objects include coins, pipes, and cutlery. And this word here, cutlery, that's the group noun for what you can see in the picture. Fork, knife, and spoon. When we group them all together, they're what we call cutlery. Yes. Plastic is used to make objects that are used for clothing and containing things. Yes. Like here in the picture, you can see a pair of Wellington boots. And plastic is waterproof. So when it's raining, you will see that most of the clothes people wear when it's raining to protect them are made of plastic because plastic is waterproof. Examples of plastic objects include toys, chairs, and bins. Yes. All of the chairs that we are sitting on now in class are made of plastic. They look like this. Wood is used to make objects that are used for furniture and stationery. 
Yes, such as the pencil that you write with, or maybe the ruler that you have. Some of them are made from wood. Examples of wooden objects include pencils, tables, and fences. Yes. Rubber is used to make objects that are used for footwear and relaxing. Examples of rubber objects include sandals, erasers and mattresses because rubber is a nice soft material so it's good for our shoes because it's nice to our feet when we walk or our beds for sleeping our mattresses are nice and soft the property of a material means the way each material feels and reacts to pressure and here we can see some of the different types of properties. Transparent, which means see-through. Bendy, rigid, hard, and soft. By now, guys, you know which of the different materials use each property. Glass has a transparent property because we can see through it. Plastic has a flexible property because we can bend it from one shape to another. Yeah. Bendy and flexible is the same thing. In the slide before, it said bendy. If you hear bendy and flexible, they mean the same thing. Metal has a rigid property because it will always stay in the same shape. Yes, and that's why metal is good for things like your bicycle, the frame is made of metal because you want it to stay in the same shape. Cars and transport. Rubber has a soft property. It will move and react to the force we put on it. And a good example of a rubber object is a mattress on the beds that we sleep on. When we lie on our bed, the mattress will move with our body because the rubber in the mattress is soft. And another example might be your shoes. The bottoms of most of our shoes are made of rubber. So for our feet to walk on, it's nice and soft. Wood has a hard property because it will not change shape if we apply pressure to it. Yes. And some of us have wooden chairs too. And it's the same. If we have a wooden chair or table, when we sit on it or lean on it, it will stay the same. That means it's hard. Different materials are used to make objects because their properties match the uses. Let's look at some examples now, guys. The hardness of an object is judged by its ability to withstand scratches. Yes, remember the experiments we did with the objects when we scratched them together? And the ones that left the scratch marks, they were harder. The ones that were scratched were softer. 
the elasticity of an object is its ability to return to its original shape after stretching. Yes, elasticity means it can move and change shape, but then return. And a balloon is a good example. The heat conductivity of an object is its ability to allow heat to pass through it. And you can see here on this picture, you see here the red part? That's metal. And the metal has become red hot because it's allowing the heat to pass through it. And it's the heat from the metal that is cooking the food in the frying pan. The electrical conductivity of an object is its ability to allow electricity to pass through it. Yes, remember we learnt about the electrical wires and the metal known as copper that allows the electricity to pass through it. That's what we call conductivity. Different materials are chosen to make certain objects because their properties match their uses. Copper is used to make electrical wires because it is a good electrical conductor. Yes, like we've seen earlier, when the electricity was passing through the wire, it was the copper that was allowing that to happen. But what about the other part of the wire? Plastic is used to wrap the copper wires because it is a good electrical insulator. Yes. If we were to touch the copper wire, we would get the electric shock. That's why we have plastic on the outside so that we can touch and hold the wires. The plastic insulates the electricity so that we don't get hurt. Wool is used to make winter clothes. Wool keeps us warm by trapping body heat. Yes, that's why in cold places, or even in Thailand sometimes when the weather is cold, we like to wear woolly hats or woolly scarves because it keeps our body heat inside and allows us to stay warm. Rubber is elastic. It can be stretched to tie hair and hold it in place. Yes, all girls, you will know about this because you all wear hairbands and it's the elasticity or the elastic that allows that to happen. The body of the frying pan is made of metal. And as we now know, metal is a heat conductor. Yes, here is the body of the frying pan. And the metal gets hot. And that's what allows the heat to cook the egg. The handle of the frying pan is made of plastic. Plastic is a heat insulator. So the word insulate means protect. It means we can hold the handle because it's plastic and it won't be too hot. The spatula 
used for cooking is made of wood. And wood is similar to plastic. Wood is a heat insulator. We can hold the wooden spatula and other wooden things without it being too hot so that we can cook without being burnt. Any questions, guys? That was excellent. Very well done. Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the PowerPoint presentation so that we can review the different materials that we've learnt about and also the properties they display and the things they are used for. And what we've got now is our first worksheet of this review lesson. We have a worksheet with a table on it and the table has objects, materials, uses and properties all things that we've learnt about previously. Some of the portions of the table are completed. What we want our students to do is use the knowledge they have learnt to complete the other parts. For example, the first one, the object, is given, a window. So our students then need to think of the material windows are made from, why they are used, and the properties they show, and then complete each one. And teachers, you can also assist our students with any vocabulary by writing them on the board. But what's the first thing to do, guys? Names on top. And give our students around 12 minutes for this activity and help them with anything they need by monitoring the class. So, Ned, this one's for you. Pak Bung for you. You're welcome. Pat for you. You're welcome. Nadia, here's yours. You're welcome. Chu for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Down, here's yours. You're welcome. Trail for you. You're welcome. Bangbon for you. You're welcome. And Lakau. So guys, this table is similar to the one we did in a previous lesson. But what you need to do this time is try to complete the missing gaps. And if you need any help with spelling or vocabulary, let me know. So for example, a window. What material is a window made of? Glass. So in the material section, we will write glass. A S S. Now, why do we use windows? Looking. No. Pakbung, that's the property. Correct. But that's the final one. That's the property. Why do we use windows? Looking. Oh. O K I N G. And then the property, Pakmung, see through. The reason we use windows for looking is because they are see through. Or, if you remember the long word, transparent. So there's the first one done for you guys. Now, the next one, you have the use cooking. So have a think, what object do we use for cooking? Frying pan. Frying pan. Excellent. F-R-Y-I-N-G. Pan. So thinking back to the frying pan, what materials did we have for the frying pan? Metal. We'll go with metal, because the plastic part is for holding. The part for cooking is metal. And the property that frying pans and the metal shows, we have to use cooking because the property heat conductivity. It allows the heat to transfer so that foods like eggs and other things get cooked. And then let's have a think about wool. What objects were made from wool? 
not rubber bands. No, that's wood. Clothes. Remember, wool is a warm product. So we can have clothes. And remember all the W's, wool is for wearing because it is warm. That's why in winter we wear winter clothes that are made of wool. Maybe not so much in Thailand, but certainly where I am from in England, in the winter, lots of clothes made of wool. Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the first worksheet activity where they had to demonstrate their knowledge of the various objects with the materials, their uses and properties by completing the table. And my students here all did an excellent job. And what we're going to do now is our stretch sequence. So let's stand up guys and push in our chairs. And for this sequence we'll have a game of teacher says. So listen carefully. If teacher says, we can do. If teacher doesn't say, don't do. So hands on head. Touch your knees. Teacher says, touch your shoulders. Teacher says, arms in the air. Teacher says, turn around. Teacher says, tear back the other way. Teacher says, arms down. Jumping up and down. Very good, guys. Well, listen. Teacher says, hold your ears. Teacher says, touch your nose. Teacher says, hands on stomach. Hands on shoulders. Very good. Teacher says, hands on head. And teacher says, down into a little ball. Teacher says, arms down. Five, four, three, two, one, jump. Teacher says, jump. And teacher says, please sit down. And now it's time for our second worksheet of this review lesson. And for this worksheet, we want our students to use their imagination because what we want them to do is draw an object, anything they like. You can choose one object and draw it in the box here. But then what our students need to do is to color it nicely and then describe the name of the object, the materials it is made from, the uses it is for, and also the properties it displays. So, okay, guys, choose one object, and then you can draw your picture and color, and then fill in the gaps in the spaces provided to show understanding of object, materials, uses, and properties. And if our students can't think, we've got some examples on the board already. So give our students around 12 minutes for this activity and then they can present at the end of the lesson. And don't forget guys, names on top first. So like out, this one's for you. Bank one for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Plow, this one's for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Down for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Chew, this one's for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Nadia, this one's for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Pat, for you. You're welcome. Pak Bung, this one's for you. And net, finally, for you. So guys, think of one object. It can be anything, anything you want. Draw it in your box and colour it nicely. And then think about the name of the object, the materials it is made from. And some objects are made from more than one material. And you have some examples on the board if you can't think. So we want the object name, the materials it's made from, the uses it is for, and the properties it displays. So for example, you might want to draw some clothes. And the clothes can be made from wool. And the use of the clothes is for wearing, and the properties they display is they are warm.
So that's an eraser. Okay, so now you need to, the name of the object and the materials it's made from. And remember guys, to call it in your pictures nicely so you can present at the end of the lesson. If you need any help with spelling or anything else, let me know. So Nadia, what's your object going to be? Hairband. Okay. So Nadia, hairband. Hairband is similar to eraser, made of rubber. Pak Bung, what are you drawing? Looks like clothes. Okay. Blackout, what's your object? Glass. Okay. A glass is made from glass. So if you draw the glass, you'll have glass twice. Glass is the object and glass is the material. And remember guys, once you've done your drawings, you can colour them in nicely too. Okay, okay so two, what's your object? What's this? Eraser. Eraser. So the name of the object is eraser. And then the material it's made from, its use and its properties. And if you need any help with spelling, guys, because you don't have to choose the things that are on the board. Okay, and then you can call it in two bank one. Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the second worksheet activity also, where they had to design their own objects and then display the correct materials, uses and properties. And as you can see here, all of my students have done a brilliant job. So well done, guys. And that's all for today's review lesson. So we hope you enjoyed it and learnt a little bit more about materials and their different uses properties and the things they are made and we'll see you again soon for the next lesson so can we wave goodbye guys bye bye, bye, -bye. see you again next time